The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Generations Radio, where the focus is on our seniors and their families. We are here each Saturday afternoon from 5 until 6 p.m., bringing you resourceful information with our radio team of professionals in the field of aging. Stay with us for the next one hour as we explore different ways to make life more exciting and meaningful for our extraordinary seniors. Right here on AM 690, The Answer. And now, here is our host and the publisher of Generations Magazine, Percy Ihara. Good afternoon. Welcome to Generations Radio. I am Percy Ihara, your host, here, as you know, every Saturday and Sunday. As well, on KITV, every Saturday morning, we will feature uh, a story about aging called the Aging Well segment for KITV News because they are the only TV station that has news in the morning, every Saturday and Sunday morning. So anyway, thank you for tuning in here. And if you're listening to this via our website, generations808.com, as you know from home, you can um, uh, view this listen to this radio show and all, and all the past shows on our website. So anyway, we're here with a very interesting topic. I found out about them. Actually, I've, I heard about this program about a year ago at the senior fair. And as you guys know, it's always a senior fair. It's always the last Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of September of the year at the Blaisdell. And I heard about this program um, maybe a year, two years ago. And then so when I spoke to uh, Interim Healthcare, one of our leading home care agencies here, they thought they told me that hey, by the way, we are having this program here in Hawaii. So I got a hold of and found Liz Wolf here, who is interim healthcare, to explain. Come on the radio show to explain this uh, this uh, great veteran benefit. So thank you, Liz, from uh, interim healthcare. Thank you for having me, Percy. So um, yeah, get, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am the sales and marketing manager for interim healthcare Honolulu. We are a locally owned and operated company with a national support system um, as a national franchise. Um, and this includes a national contract with the Veterans Care Coordination Program that um, helps veterans receive free home care. Yeah. So you actually are a home care company here in Hawaii. And you have, you're, you're one, of the, one of the, if not the only one, one of the few that ever, ever offers this program here in Hawaii. Right. Yes, we. Um, I had just found out. I started with the company recently, and I think um, I was really impressed with this program. And I, I don't think enough veterans um, and their families are aware of it. Absolutely, right. And that's one of the things we. That's why we do this in Generations Magazine. We're going to have to have you write a st- story about this in an article about this program because, as some of the people may or may know or may not know, I'm a I'm a baby boomer, but also a um, um, army brat. Oh. My father is retired army, and my mother raised six kids traveling around the world. So I tell people, uh, after word is the right word to use, but I'll just say it anyway. I'm I'm half katonk. <laughs> katonk means in here in Hawaii, it means you know mainland Oriental or so mainland Japanese. Ah, uh-huh. and and a lot of people, old timers, know that story about katonk. So I left Hawaii when I was nine, came back when I was sixteen. So your growing years, I was on the mainland. So I have. You know, the way I see the world, it made me a little bit different maybe than some people that maybe hasn't traveled a lot because I've actually done a lot of traveling. So anyway, so when I saw this program that offers benefits to veterans and spouses, and after I talked on the phone about this program, I was like, wow, this is a really good program. Liz, you got to come on the radio show. So thank you for showing up here. Yes. And your dad is a great example of someone who would be eligible for this uh, program potentially. I will tell him that. Yeah. So real basically, you know, we're going to put a, you know, we're going to put this on the, on the radio show on our website, but, and we'll probably have an article about this, but in a nutshell, so first of all, I mean, is your owner a veteran or how did you guys find out about this program? No, you know? our owners are not, but um, Interim Healthcare is actually a national company with franchises all across the country. So um, the Veterans care coordination all across the country works with interim health care to provide well first to apply and then provide home care for these veterans and once they are um, approved they have it for life which is huge for life for their lifetime oh, i didn't know that yes so they have to get qualified so it, and it helps the veteran and the spouse is that correct yes so the any surviving spouse um, is also eligible if they were married to a wartime veteran uh, they cannot have been divorced or remarried after the um, the veteran's death. Oh, 
Okay, that little throws a little wrench in qualifying then, huh? Mm, yeah. <laughs> if they met a second love, then they don't qualify. Well, anyway, so this is a benefit for veterans. Now, when you say veterans, uh, I was talking to somebody just recently. Um, I think it was yesterday. And they were saying they didn't qualify for, they may not qualify for this program because I don't think they were in, they were in war. Do you have to be in, active in a war like World War One, Two, or Vietnam? Right. So um, mm-hmm. it is for wartime veterans that have been honorably discharged. That's another important oh, component. That, that will be, yeah. Um, and then the, their surviving spouses. Um, and they must have conser- or served 90 consecutive days of the acti- active duty service with one day during a period of war, such as World War II, Korea, Vietnam, or the Gulf War. Oh, the- Really? So they have to have actually one day of service. Right. So now, they, do they have to be deployed or does that, I mean, they could be working here in Hawaii and, and the war be going on. So it's got to be, the war has to got to be going on. Right. So they did not have to serve in combat or overseas okay. except for um, those that qualify as. Um, Vietnam veterans from February 1961 to August 5th, 1964. So that group, they have had to be um, in the Republic of Vietnam. And then for Gulf veterans, because there's kind of been ongoing wars, um, there's fewer of them because they're younger. Of course, they haven't quite gotten there. Um, But they must have served from August 2nd, 1990 and on. And their exception is a two-year active duty requirement. So that's interesting so really, this is not really regarding seniors because Generations Magazine is a senior resource. So actually, just veterans in general. They can Absolutely. be in for it. Oh, that's good. So I'm glad we're ta- we taped this, and I'm glad that we paused it on our website because, you know, if you heard it live, you, it's hard to write all these numbers down. Mm-hmm. So they can go back on our website at, at a future later date and get all these numbers, or I just have them call you, right? Exactly, Liz? and that's what we try. It, it's even for me at first, it was so complicated, um, and now I kind of have it more down pat, but it's kind of better if, if any interested veteran, really any veteran, it doesn't cost anything to apply. It's worth trying. So you can call us, and then we can do the application for you, and literally it takes two minutes, and then if you're kind of that screening goes well, then you put more time into getting the documents, but it doesn't cost a thing. Yeah, and remember before we went on air, I was asking Liz about this uh, long-term care insurance program that's that's offered for veterans, and that is totally separate. And you have a long name for this program, right? (laughs) Yes, it is the Veterans Affairs Aid and Attendance Pension Benefit. Aid and Attendance Pension Benefit. Right, and this one they can earn up to... $25,440 $25,440 annually for the rest of their life for home care services, which are non-medical, groceries, laundry, housekeeping, transportation, things like that. So when you say when you say a, a pension, that means they get that money, but that money has to be going toward home care. Is that correct? Yes. So um, in this program, what will happen mm-hmm. is once we help them get applied, the Veterans Care Coordination will um, actually – work with us so that we are directly paid by them. So it has to go towards home care. Oh, it because, cannot go towards, you know, other things. Okay. So, I mean, I'm not, I've, I've never worked for home care. So when you say home care, so you have to provide, interim has to provide the service. Um, <clears throat> doing it this way with, with, with the, applying through interim and the veterans care coordination, then we would provide the service. But, you know, I just submitted some, um, applications for VFW Samoa. So we're not providing that service, but I want as many veterans to have a chance. So I went ahead and faxed those in too. Oh. So, you know, anyone so no who, interim in Samoa? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> you like moving? Yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> so... Um, so it's two, a little over two thousand a month they get, right? Yes, roughly twenty five thousand a year, depending on depending right. <clears throat> on each case, right? Okay, so um, so is that that's per month? So let's say they use up they use up that twenty five thousand for the first two weeks, or uh, two thousand something, right? In the first two weeks, does so that to be spread out per day, or do you know how it's, how it's distributed? No, they can um, they can use it as you know fast as they want or need. Or and actually, it's really great if they do go in the hospital where they won't be using their home care hours, they can roll over to another month. Oh, they can roll it over, right? 
Oh, that's that's pretty good then. Yeah, so they always will have that benefit, and they won't ever lose out. But they do have to maintain the hours of home care to keep that for life. So that's, I mean, they're not putting any money out of their pocket. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. to retain it for life, they have to continue? To spend the hours. Oh. To stay active in the program, they have to, con- so, they, you know, they can't actually just get home care for a year, then go off for a year, then get it again. It has to be oh. continuous. Okay. And so when you say non-medical, for our listeners out there, what, what, I mean, when I say non-medical, it means what can, they, what can that caregiver do for you or a home aid do for you? Right. So that's um, assisting with eating, dressing, bathing, toileting, transferring, um, continence if they you know, need help, if they're incontinent, companionship even, meal preparation, light housekeeping and laundry. Um, they can help with medication management, errand shopping, and they can drive them places and you know, even um, go golfing with them if that's what they need. But it really... You that know, really comes on a companion. Exactly. Oh, that's interesting. That's this actually sounds like a pretty good program. I'm yeah. Glad. I knew her. I, I heard about it a couple of years ago, but the company that was offering it, they weren't. They they look like they're selling this, so they wanted to sell you something else with this program. So I really wasn't sure. I actually never knew anybody that actually helped them apply. Right. Um. And so, do you have anybody here in Hawaii on this program right now? Yeah, we have um several people. I mean, probably. More than a handful, I would say maybe about 20 people that are receiving home care benefits and it's oh, covered. How long, how long have you been doing it in Hawaii? Um, well, interim has been here um, like three three to five years. Yeah, around there. And, <clears throat> right. And um, as in terms of how long they've been doing this program in Hawaii, I'm not sure. But I would really like to make it more um, well-known because I don't think enough – I thought it was a gimmick as well. It sounds too good to be yeah. true. Yeah. And my grandmother had Alzheimer's, and her husband was a World War II vet. And she would have been she would have been able to stay in her house longer if someone had told us about it. So I think that there and Hawaii is full of veterans. So I really think there's so many people here that if they knew they could have a little bit of help, they could stay in their home instead of going to assisted living. Is there a limit on on this money? The t- well, the twenty five. No, 20- no. But I mean, let's say a hundred people sign up. Uh, oh, no. No limit. Really? I know. It's amazing. Well, then we definitely got to get this out there. I mean, I can get you into a lot of different places. So anyway, so there's no cost to apply. No. Okay. And it's a little, dep- depending on how well you qualify, up to $25,000 something dollars to per year. Mm-hmm. And I like the fact that it, this program allows a spouse as well. Right. Right. As long as they didn't get divorced. As and long it's, as And they're... it's not a new spouse. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so and it's, even though they're they're receiving disability from the VA as well, is that correct? Okay, so mm-hmm. yeah, so there's the one one thing that I have learned with this program that's a little uh, confusing is that if if the veterans receiving disability of a sixty percent disability rate or lower, it's still really a great idea for them to apply. Um, because seventy percent and above, they can get skilled care. They can get full time care, right? Yeah, that <clears throat> and it's their income. And so it's kind of like um, one or the other, but with the lower rating, I guess there's still room that there might be some money. They're not, you know, they're still eligible to get some extra funding. But if if they have, you know, 100% disability where that's kind of their income, we don't want to take that away to be home care. So that's usually how it works. So does it work, the qualifying, is it based off of how much money they made or what rank they were, you know? Oh, no. Um. That's an interesting question. I don't think it has anything to do with ranking or even the number of years. Um, I think as long as they have the, that minimum requirements right. with the wars. Right. But there are some asset um, assets cannot be more than 80000 It does not include your home or your car, which here in Hawaii, the home is oh, there insane, is, So there right? is an asset test. Um, yeah, qualifying? you have to prove your assets and things oh, like that. Oh, so it's almost like a Medicaid one. Medicaid for couples is one hundred and thirteen thousand. For an individual, it's, it's only they can only have two thousand dollars. So you said they can have eighty thousand. 
Yeah, it's 80000 in assets, and that doesn't include the home, and it doesn't include the um, one car. It would include the other car. Uh-oh. And then the, also they will check if there's been recent transfers of assets to family members. Oh, Is um, there a look-back period? Do you know? I think it's two to three years. Okay, because the state's uh, what a Medicaid program, which is nationwide, is a five-year look-back. Okay. To give away assets. So Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um so are there any other, besides, since we're on that topic of qualifying, are there any other things, be, uh, uh, the qualifying test? You know, you said there's no income qualification, right? Oh, right. So um, there's no, so it's really just that asset, the 80000 limit. Um, the but, years, the, the, how long much active duty they had. Right. And if you're in war one day. Mm-hmm. And then there's one other aspect, and then that that's where this program's interesting as well to me. Um there is a where's this ratio? A medical ex- expense ratio um, that compares their income to their medical expenses, um, and that is important because for some people that do have more assets, if they have a lot of medical expenses, they can still they might still qualify. Um, and then it's also important because. Um, sometimes if people were to initiate home care just for a month even while they're applying, then they would make the limit that, that ratio to be able to have it for life. So, um, sometimes that means paying out of pocket, but for those that can't afford to pay out of pocket, they have a loan program. Um, I recently tried to help a homeless lady who was in a group home do this program too, and it ended up being a disability issue, not... Um, you know, not necessarily that she didn't have any credit or anything, but there's not really any credit checks. There's no financial screening and a family member can sign the loan with them. So there's not really a whole lot of risk. And then that helps them put the home care in place. And then once the, they're totally approved, the VA pays that loan back. So essentially the, the VA does. Yeah. So they'll pay back, um, the veterans care coordination so then the patient generally doesn't have to pay anything again it depends per patient what they need wow it's kind of complicated you know exactly (laughs) we're here here with liz wolf from interim health care a unique program that's been around for a little while but i'm glad we're bringing it out now because it's called the aid and uh attendance program through the veterans administration you've had to have uh 90 days of active duty one day during an uh, active war, right? The Gulf, the Vietnam, World War One, World War Two, and and it covers the veteran and the spouse as long as they didn't get divorced, right? Because <laughs> uh, that's kind of an important one, I'll tell yep. you. Because you know I've had Social Security on here, and then when you get divorced, there are some benefits. Mm-hmm. First, I did not know that, but if you got remarried, you don't get the spouse's benefit. So there's a lot of different things, but this is a great program. It's for um, wartime veterans and their spouses where they can get um, uh, home service, Mm non-medical. Is that correct? Okay. Which is generally not covered. You know, it's not covered by Medicaid. Usually people have to pay out of pocket and it can be really expensive. Oh, absolutely. We've been talking. I talk about that every day with my (laughs) clients and the financial advisors. And so it's a little over 25,000. They have Mm -hmm. to qualify and there's no no cost to qualify. No cost. So walk me through what ha- actually happened. I call up, say, Liz, I heard about this program on Generations Radio. Mm-hmm. I'm a veteran. I qualify. I was in the Army for 10 years. I was there in Vietnam. Um, I- I'm looking at what can I get? Why, why should I take it? What's the pro- how's, that, how's that conversation go? So I have a pre-qualification referral form that has nine very simple yes or no questions. Um, and generally, you know, it takes like two minutes and I can ask the, you know, the, the interested veteran this myself, or I can email the form. Um, and then I, I email it to an internal account manager who gets them kind of expedited in the process of, of their application. This is a mainland, a mainland, um, company, right? Right. And I believe they're in Missouri where, I think it's Missouri, where there are, there's a library with all the veterans, um, records, oh, so really? they're able to hmm. literally drive there, get them for them. Because if you were to um, s- try to apply for this on your own without this program, it can take you know one to two years. Yeah, because they have to actually verify everything. Yes, but it can get a little complicated, huh. and that's why it's easier. Just you know, you can just call us, and there's I can- no cost to you guys anyway. 
No, in fact, um, we really, we're just, for us, the rewarding part is more veterans having access to home care. Um, We even have a lower reimbursement rate. So if anything, we kind of financially lose. But at the same time, you know, our veterans served for us so bravely. We want to get back No, really, interim health care, I have to give you uh, a lot of credit for stepping up to the plate here. So there's nine questions. Can we go over the, are you allowed to go over what kind of questions they ask? Yeah. Absolutely. So um, first you you say whether you're a veteran, the surviving spouse, or a couple applying. Um, the first one was the veteran honorably discharged. The second one um, is related to the war and asks if you served at least 90 consecutive days of active duty with at least one day during the following wartime periods. And then it has the wars that we discussed listed. Um, number three, if a surviving spouse, were you married to the veteran at the time of death? Number four is also for a spouse. Um, did you remain unmarried after the veteran's death? And number five is, is there a need for assistance with activities of daily living? And then it gives the examples of, of the, um, activities I mentioned. Um, the following question is, are assets less than 80,000? And it kind of explains a little, um, and then it'll, and then it says, if, if all those questions are yes, then please continue. If they're no, please just dis- discuss other funding options in private duty. So, you know, they make it pretty easy. And it's pretty easy. You can do that with a phone. Exactly. And then once, and then we'll, if so, we'll finish the questions. Is the client currently receiving services that's more for our organization? Um, is assisted living or nursing home care being considered within 60 to 90 days? And that's because... This is such kind of a involved process. If they're going to be doing that, they're, it's sort of pointless to waste all this time applying for the sure. home care. Um, and then the final question is, the veteran or surviving spouse already receiving VA money? And that refers to the disability that we talked about. So again, because it's free, because it's so easy, if you're even on, if you think you're on the fence where you might be eligible and might not, it's just, it's so much. Might as well apply. Exactly. You don't know. You have nothing to lose and every 25000 to gain, possibly. Do, do, so do people apply after they need some kind of care? A lot of times people <clears throat> wait until they do need care. Um, I recently um, had a meeting with a, a veteran who has ALS now, and he, his wife was reluctant. You know, ALS is a, it's a very fast progression, so he was diagnosed in November, and then he um, you know, lost the ability to speak by January. Wow. So the wife became a primary caretaker, um, and she wasn't quite at the point where she was ready to accept help, but she she already, within two months, has <clears throat> called me and said she needed help, you know? It only gets worse, unfortunately, and they need to, that caregiver has to be very careful not to get burnt out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, for their own quality of life and their own health um, and, and mental wellness. But um, he ended up getting 100% disability, so we so he did not qualify for this program, but that is excellent for him, so he has other means. Yeah. yeah. And so what, do you know if he went to the Hilo where they had the veterans uh, long-term care facility over there? No. Well, he has his care ma- managed here at Tripler. Okay, Tripler has about, I think, 18 or 24 beds. Mm-hmm. Um the one in Hilo has a hundred and I don't know eighteen beds, I think. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> yeah, we had him on a show, the Okutsu. Um, uh, it's a longer name than that, but it's after one of our veterans from the four forty second. His last name was Okutsu, and that's what it's, it's called. And it's, it's in a magazine as well, it's Generations Magazine. But that's good to know. But AAA only has a certain amount of beds. Okay, and it's very limited. But I like the fact that um, you know offers so many non medical because it, you know main thing is it, it allows them to stay in the home, right? Right. And for so many... It requires them to stay in a home, right? Right. Yeah. They have to have a home to be able to have the home care. So that... But even the group home that, you know, the homeless um, patient that I was working with, as long as she had the group home, she was eligible. So, I mean, there's, you know, so many different areas that are a little gray, but a lot of them can be um, finessed so we can help that veteran get the the monetary support. Very interesting. It's a It's a... Guys, it's a relatively new program to Hawaii. It's been around a little bit, but it hasn't been out that much. So I'm glad we have uh, Liz Wolf from Interim Healthcare here talking about the, the uh, I'm going to forget that name again, <laughs> the aid and attendance um, 
Pension benefit. Pension benefit plan from the Veterans Administration. It's a great little program here, uh, and it will definitely provide some basic um, non-medical in-home services. So anyway, we'll give out the phone number on the next segment of the Generations Radio. So we're going to take a, a short break, and we'll be right back with uh, aid and benefit or aid and attendance pension plan for veterans in the state of Hawaii. Uh, we can take a short break, and we'll be right back. with Percy Ihara from Generations Radio. If you have any questions or want to be part of our discussion, give us a call at 296-5467. That's 296-5467. This is Generations Radio on AM 690, The Answer. Moon Physical Therapy is here to help you back to recovery. Moon Physical Therapy is located on Ward Avenue across from Sports Authority. Physician prescribed for motor vehicle accidents, workman's comp, or that body pain that comes from rushing to play without warming up. Also event cardiopulmonary rehabilitation with our one-on-one patient care. Moon's Aqua Therapy heated endless pool allows for low impact exercise with less pain on land. We will give you the right exercises to get you back to health. Ask your doctor to prescribe Moon Physical Therapy. Moon Physical Therapy. We achieve results. Aloha. This is Martha Clopin. And Al Harrington. Choosing the right Medicare plan not only saves you money, it also helps you avoid headaches and heartaches down the road. We want to remind everyone to listen to a Medicare moment with Martha. Sundays from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. as we help answer important questions on Medicare so you can stay healthy, wealthy, and wise all year long. Call me at 543-2073. 543-2073. I was an addict from the age of 13. I finally decided it was time for a change. I walked into the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, and that got me ready for the real world. Now, I choose to be guided by Jesus Christ, and today, I'm building a powerful and promising future, free from drugs and alcohol. Please shop at the Salvation Army Family Stores. With our discounted sales, your support through your purchase helps men live a clean, sober, and productive life. Got Vegas on your mind? Get Vacations Hawaii on the line. Vacations Hawaii offers weekly four- and five-night Honolulu to Vegas packages, which include three meals daily from six ninety nine. dollars Stay at Hawaii's favorite casinos, California, Fremont, Main Street Station, and Orleans Hotel. Vacations Hawaii will get you there in comfort on deluxe wide-body 767 planes with complimentary in-flight hot meal service. Vacations Hawaii's frequent flyer program gives you future travel discounts and credits. So if you're ready to win big, call Vacations Hawaii at 591-4777 or visit pointvacationshawaii.com. Today, more than ever, we local people are living longer than any other state in the union with more seniors, baby boomers, and caregivers. Generations Radio promotes the importance to be proactive as we all age. The radio team will focus on issues facing our seniors and their families, finding resources to navigate healthy aging along with financial, legal, and caregiving information. So join Percy E. Hauer from 5 until 6 each Saturday, right here on AM 690, The Answer. Focusing on the issues facing our seniors and their families today. Here's our Generations Radio host, Percy Ihara. Welcome back to Generations Radio. I am Percy Ihara here every Saturday and Sunday here on AM 690, The Answer. And uh, for a lot of you guys that are our followers, by the way, you can follow us on Facebook. We do have a, a Facebook page. I am also on LinkedIn. Um, you can call us at 234-3117. Um, leave a message, or you can email us from the magazine. Uh, we're in the, if you go to generations808.com, on any article, if you have a comment, you can email us. 
Uh, you can also, if you want to have a specific topic or program you want us to cover, um, please let us know because um, we want to know about all the programs around the nation. We are here talking about the very special program from Interim Healthcare called the Aid and, aid and Attendance Pension Plan. But I did want to let you guys know, if you don't know already, the new Generations magazine is out and about. And uh, it's, it's the February-March issue. As on the cover, it says simply facing Alzheimer's. And this is actually the first cover that we've ever done without real live pictures of people on here, even though it's a silhouette. Um, and this is the cover. I have to thank my art director, Wilson Angel, because this cover is just, you know, you see this cover and go, boom, it's right in front of you. And if you go to our website, it's on there as well. But we're in over 100 locations. Um, the best place to get it, depending where you live, would be the li- state library. And we're in on every island. Uh, the YMCA's Big City Diner, Vacations Hawaii. But library is very, very easy place to go to. If they run out, tell them, can you get some more magazines? We're at very selected Safeway Longs and Times throughout the island. If you're on a big island, which I know we cover, and we will, you can listen to us on AM 690. Uh, at all the KTA stores, by the way, on the big island. On Maui, uh, best place is probably either Senior Center, Kaunoa, or... Uh, the one in, in uh, Lahaina, and, and at the Office on Aging there. Same thing with Kauai on the Office on Aging. So um, best place, if you, you don't want to read it, get pick up a hard copy, you can read them all online at generations808.com. You can also click back on our um, past issues on the right side there and can look at all the past issues we've done and search the topics. Uh, and as well, all these radio shows, Generations Radio Show, will be on our website uh, this show particularly will be on in about three weeks. We'll upload it, and you can listen to it at your leisure at home. And um, some of the big stories in the, the magazine, this issue is uh, one of them that I've been telling people about almost every daily with our clients and financial advisors and attorneys is the new legal document called POST. And uh, I believe it's Scott Mukuakani, our legal uh, advisor in the magazine, talks about POST, and that's Physician's Order of Life-Sustaining Treatment. It's a portable document that you actually have to get from your doctor's office. And so attorney Scott Mukua County talks about that. And it's a special document that you and your doctor kind of talk about and discuss and fill out. And he, and he signs it. And it basically states your wishes uh, when you become incapacitated, if you ever have a heart attack, or CPR, if you, whether you want CPR or not, things like that. So it's very important for you to understand what's going on. This article is a great article. Um, and I think people need to start realizing at some point we, we're not going to be around. At some point we may um, need, need medical care. Hopefully it's not an emergency. And at some point down the road, hopefully you did your medical directive, but also this um, post, Physi- Physician's Order for Life Support, Life Sustaining Treatment. And it's very important. You get it from your doctor's office. So when you next time you go to a doctor's office, ask them, can I, you guys fill out a post? And it's a physician's order. Um, this feature start facing Alzheimer's Association features uh, three uh, professionals in our industry here in Hawaii. Uh, Dr. Corey Liao, who's here on Oahu at St. Francis and Castle Medical. He has his own um, Hawaii Pacific Neuroscience Center, and they are doing clinical trials there. Uh, Christine Payne, who is the executive director for the Aloha chapter of Alzheimer's Association. And Chris Ridley, um, representing Alzheimer's on the Big Island and also at Life Care Center. So, uh, they do a great job. There's a lot of information about Alzheimer's dementia. There's also a uh, segment here about some of the services because if your family is dealing with this issue, uh, you need support. You need to understand how long this disease is going to last, what to do in, in, if it lasts you know, a few years because you don't want to get burnt out. So they have a support group, group meeting every week somewhere in the state. So please check them out um, as well. Uh, look out for their walk. They're going to have a all summer's walk sometime later this year. Um, as well, the YMCA does great jo- great work, but we have several articles about Alzheimer's in the magazine. Uh, one of our newest uh, writers is uh, Annette Pang, who's a, actually a life coach, and she talks about new ways to view Alzheimer's because it is a family disease. Family needs to understand to get documented. In other words. They'll say, you know, Liz, they'll say, well, you know, my mom's just getting old. Well, that's true. We're all going to get old. But at some point down the road, your doctor needs to find out whether it is Alzheimer's or dementia or just old age. 
Because once they can document they have the disease, then then they can really search out the support. Because right now, that number of 25,000 in the state of Hawaii is very, very low. 60% of people that have Alzheimer's in the state of Hawaii are not documented. Wow. So that number is going to go way up. So uh, I believe March, in L- March, uh, they're going to have uh, actually three different sessions where uh, the Alzheimer's Association and the state of Hawaii Office Center on Aging is bringing in doctors from the mainland to teach practitioners here how to document people that have Alzheimer's. Oh, that's wonderful. Because a lot of times these general practitioners, your PCP, primary care physician, really won't take the time because they're too busy. They're so busy. They get three to four minutes at, at best. And they don't have that time. So if you're familiar with the process, if you go to, and I always tell people, you know, if your parent's getting older, go with your parent to the doctor to know what's going on and push for this. They need to push the doctor to say, can we get tested? Can we set up another appointment? Because it's really, really important. Because this is a lifelong disease. And it's a family disease. So it's very important. So um, it's really important to really, if your parents are getting up in age, really to start holding their hand, walking yourself through that process of seeing a doctor, uh, making sure all the legal paperwork is in order, and also also their financial paperwork in order. Also in this issue, we talk about transportation. Uh, you know, Avalon Healthcare, who runs, uh, they actually bought Halinani. They actually run a couple of skilled nursing facilities. They actually have a bus service now, so it helps out. We also have an article about uh, Hawaii's The Bus, uh, run by the city and county, and also uh, on Maui. Maui has a really great uh, transportation service by MEO, the Maui Economic Opportunity Board, but they have a free service over there in Maui, so it's really great to see that. Um, but anyway, we're talking about uh, a very unique benefit that I just heard about uh, actually two years ago, but I really found, you're the first person, Liz, I really talked about that, really knows this program. I, I let like you, like, wow, is this a really a true program? Is it really a benefit, or are they trying to cross-sell some other product? Right. And it's absolutely free. Yeah. And I thought it was a gimmick too. It just seems too good to be true. But So can we go back a little bit? What was the mission about when they, when this program was created? Um, so our partner, the Veterans Care Coordination, um, the president or CEO um, had a family member who served in Europe in World War II. He wasn't injured. He was discharged after two years of service and spent the next 60 years raising his family and removed from the military. So when he was 85, he suffered a stroke and he needed assistance with housekeeping, meal preparation, medication reminders, and personal care, not technically medical care. So unfortunately for John, there weren't professionals to tell him about the VA's aid and attendance pension benefit. And so as a result, he had to move into a facility when he could have just stayed at home. Hmm. So the goal behind that company is now to, you know, make sure that no deserving senior goes without the knowledge of these benefits that he or she could earn. So is this program through Interim Healthcare, do all your Interim Healthcare um, um franchises offer this program? Absolutely. Yeah. So they all, um, uh, you know, our franchise works closely with this veteran care coordination and working with them, we are able to help patients expedite this and we wouldn't be able to either being out here in Hawaii. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I want to talk about interim healthcare. You're now your title and we're here with Liz Wolf mm-hmm. uh, with inter- interim healthcare. What is actually your title? And I didn't realize you're on Maui and soon the big island. Yes, we will be opening uh, home care on Maui and Big Island. Um, we also eventually will be opening a uh, retirement home here near Kalakaua Gardens, but that's probably two years off now. Um, so I'm really excited about learning about Hilo because I think that'll be great for our Big Island home care. You have an idea when you can open up on Hilo? Um, with I think within well, by the end of this year. Is well, we know timeline. KTA is a big local store over there. Yeah. If you if you um if you get a chance to get over there, and we we distribute a lot of the copies over there, and so we definitely want to get you out there. Spread and, the word. Yeah. Are you so? Are you open on Maui yet? Or, or no? Both of those are are in the process of being opened, and you well, know, no wonder you guys are so up. busy. Yep, <laughs> we're pretty busy. Have you been out there to, to visit them at all? <laughs> no, not yet, but I was just on Maui for the weekend, and I saw so many whales. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's it's a good time. I've been whale watching, and uh, Maui's great. Well, you're not going to move to Maui, are you? No, well, Maui's I don't great, know. Though. You Maui's never great. know. Maui is beautiful. <laughs> um, but I am really excited that we'll be able to offer you know other islands the same 
uh, access to our home care and then also help them be able to you know, get into this program. Yeah. So let's recap. We're talking about the new veteran, well, not new veteran program, but recently for with interim healthcare. And mm-hmm. you're one of the few people, if, uh, if not the only person, company to do it here in Hawaii, where they have to be a veteran. Mm-hmm. Um, now, so I, I like to repeat it myself so I know when people ask me down the road. Otherwise, I'll just call Liz. I'll put you on my <laughs> yeah. on my cell phone. But they have to be a veteran, have, have been in active duty 90 days, mm-hmm. a work actually been in active duty for at least one day during during a war mm-hmm. and they do not have to be through combat right no okay and then they also have to be there's no income restraints but there is a financial asset test right eighty thousand, right? and, and it's on a sliding scale based on um life expectancy expectancy so uh it kind of again it's every case is different and it's so easy to apply i say just go for it and then if you don't at least you tried well what i like about it you know they're, they're they don't count they don't count the, the house mm-hmm. right it's, yeah only the financial asset where the bank account checking account savings account right right oh. and that's huge because yeah. at one patient i was trying to qualify i Saw on Zillow, they bought their house for twenty thousand, and now it's worth like eight hundred and eighty thousand. And I thought he's never going to qualify, but because the house doesn't count, you know, and they didn't—they're not extremely wealthy people. It's just the real estate in Hawaii is. Well, I, the one I was talking about earlier that they found out their father could not qualify, but maybe it's, so. I got to have him call you because the father was active duty, but they want—they need service for the mother, and I didn't realize it's for spouses as well. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And that's, yeah, that's a really good point to, to remind people because, you know, everyone thinks just veterans, but yeah, if there's surviving the spouses, spouse, as long as they weren't divorced it, or um, remarried or remarried, mm-hmm. and, unless they remarried uh, to another veteran. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. well, and then they probably, well, that's true. right? Wow. Well, and they can't have, they can't have real estate. What also, when you off air, we were talking about, you can combine services. So they could be on Medicaid or Medicare as well, right? Absolutely. They don't, they don't look at it that. Yes, we have a patient right now who um, she's kind of covered, you know, all sort of throughout the week with with some medical um, home care that comes. And then this program allows her to have home care, um, you know, for incontinence and different things like that when the medical care is not offered. I see. And so it's a simple nine question pre-qualification. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, it's interesting. So now... The process. So they fill out this nine question questionnaire, mm-hmm. and can they do it over the phone? Yeah, actually, oh, really? I think wh- oh, what oh. I'd encourage people to do is to call our office, and I can fill it out for them. I mean, I can always email it to them, so and then email it to um, the person. But that way, we just get it done, and I can kind of explain this questions that they might have questions. Like I even right. typed up a little cheat sheet, so it makes it a little easier to understand. But generally, I mean, they're yes or no questions. Um, takes two minutes over the phone. And then, you know, if after that they look like a good candidate, then they do have to get some paperwork together. Uh-huh. But it still does not cost a thing. I see. And so what's the process? You submit the nine-question nine, qu- nine question questionnaire, and they don't have to sign it, right? Uh, so, yeah. No, just, just So you provide- can email it out to the provider in Missouri. Mm-hmm. Get them pre-qualified. Yeah, no, there's no contract. They're not committing to anything. It, yeah, there's no signature. Uh, they put their contact information so that person is able to communicate in case they are a good candidate or let them know that they are not. Or sometimes they'll let us know that they are not, and then mm-hmm. I, I will, you know, close the loop there. So um, whichever works best for that particular veteran. But generally, we send this in. Um they say their average, uh, well, acceptance time is three to four months. But say a veteran needs home care like tomorrow, they can either pay out of pocket to go towards that if they're able to, if they have the means, or they can work out this loan program with them and then they can have that home care. And then once um, it's approved, it'll kind of back pay. So then it'll back pay the loan that the Veterans Care Coordination um, put out for them for the oh, home that's care. Interesting. They they pay us directly, so technically the client's not bothered with anything financial other than signing that loan. And so you have you said twenty or so clients right now, mm-hmm, at least. Give us yeah. some give us some kind of firsthand experience of how they're doing, 
how they've benefited from the pro- from the program. You have an idea? Yeah. Well, so I've recently started working really closely with um, Tripler and the VA because there's so many. Um, this it this program's been around, but it's not. I don't well, think no. been marketed very well, and maybe perhaps because it's not a huge. Um, moneymaker. It's more a service for these veterans. So, you know, a company is not going to put everything into it, but um, it's really not been well known. So I've, I've really started to like get a lot of applications out of Tripler, but for the patients that we have had qualify and had no idea, and then they realized they actually um, can have some help financially for this home care they couldn't afford. It makes such a difference. Like there's some patients who, you know, they're incontinent and they'll sit there um in their wet uh, pants and, uh, you know, because they don't have any assistance or they can't take a bath or they can't go to the grocery store. They can't, they can't drive. So things like that. So their quality of life is improved, you know, so much. And then even sometimes the companionship when it is a, um, a, a spouse that's all alone or, you know, a veteran and he can't cook and he's so used to having his spouse, there, um, it's really nice to have another person even just to talk to, which, you know, for mental health too. And um, so, yeah, some people have really benefited from this. And, and again, you know, it's, it sounds, it all can sound a little complex, but, you know, if you qualify, it's nice to know that for the rest of your life, should you have a stroke, should you have something, that you have the ability to stay in your home a little bit longer. And I heard you say something about Tripler and the VA. Mm-hmm. So can they not apply directly through Tripler? No, this is, um, I guess, because we are, we have this contract with them. Um, they actually apply, Tripler will call me, and then I do the application, and then I submit it to the Veterans Care Coordination. So um, they don't, they help, the social workers will help them find home care, but in terms of getting it covered or approved, then it falls back on me. So once they apply, you send it out to the... the um, Veterans the, Care Coordination. Veterans Care Coordination. Mm-hmm. Is, and there, then, is there more paperwork they have to fill out? Um, well, so they will start speaking with the veteran. Um, there are some, I wrote down the yeah. documents. There's Discharge certain, papers, marriage certificate, right. certificate, medical records. Proof of income assets and that's that's all they have to provide. That. But oh. some of that can be kind of overwhelming, so it can take a little bit. I always will try to call the the veteran or patient and ask if I can help in any way. But you know, sometimes with the finance stuff, it's easier or it's, they're more comfortable just sending that directly to the person, which is understandable. Yeah, and so when they do get it qualified, two to three to four months. Then they come back and call you up, and you guys provide actually provide the care. And then we start care as soon as they're approved. Or they they did the uh, loan so they could start it. So the day they finish the application and send it in, that's when they can do the mm. kind of preliminary home care with the loan. So that can take, I think, like, you know, if they get all the documents, I mean, it could take a couple weeks. It could take a week, depending on how fast they get those documents. Oh, it's interesting. So give give our audience an idea when it, when it comes to home care, how do, how do people charge for home care? Is it by the hour? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. There's usually an hourly rate. Um, and that's about how much? Do you have an idea? Uh, about, I, I guess, between $20 and $25 an hour. That's about right. Yeah. Um, it depends. Sometimes it can be companion versus a CNA. But usually with this home care, there's not medical needs. It just depends on the patient. Um, so, yeah, but it adds up quickly. For instance, I, th- I mentioned that... Um, for 24-7 care, one month is $25,000. Yes. So I was saying in that way, this doesn't sound like it would go very far. But well, not, not too many people need that because if they did, they'd have to go to a skilled nursing facility. Probably. Exactly. And so what happens a lot of times. do that anyway. Yeah. It's families that are overworked and, you know, the, the adult children now are having to kind of work their full-time job and take care of mom or dad. So it really helps with them getting some relief or knowing someone's with them during the day when they can't be there. Things yeah. like that. That's like the perfect scenario. Yeah. And then, and that, I'm sure it happens a lot mm-hmm. because I don't know about you, but you know, I, I, I had talked before that I, I kind of encouraged my parents to buy long-term care insurance you know, because my dad's a veteran, and he said, no, Tripler will take care of me. I said, no, they're not going to take care of you, Dad. You don't have any disability from active duty. So um, 
they finally bought long term care insurance, and and that was you know obviously expensive, but not as expensive as paying three to five thousand a month. Exactly. Right. If you think about it, uh, there's thirty days in a month. Let's say, and let's say you said twenty to twenty five dollars an hour. Let's say it's twenty five dollars an hour. So that's really let's say four hours a day. Mm-hmm. That's a hundred dollars a day. That's three thousand a month. Mm-hmm. Right. That's only four hours. That's only four hours a day. Yeah. You know, most people need eight to 10 hours a day. So you're looking at guys, home care, if you don't know, I, I always tell people it's about three to $5,000. And it's really important to understand that, you know, I'm 56. A number of my friends are taking care of their parents. And I always tell them the reason why you're doing that is because your parents did not have a plan. Right. Well, guess what, guys? If you're a veteran, here's a plan. And it's, and it's better than nothing, like I said, so there's no cost to qualify. There's no nope. cost to process the paperwork. So I'm, I'm going to have my, my lady friend call you because it's her mother that needs the care, and she is a spouse of a, of a veteran. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like for the, I mean, the only thing the patient has to put into it if they pass the pre-qualification um, stage is time in gathering those documents. And obviously, if they don't qualify later, they'll shred all your documents. You know, it's all completely... Um, very legit and and there's no you know risk of um of of information being you know lost but the only thing they have to lose is that time gathering the documents and the veterans care coordination i mean they're really good about calling them and or they'll call they'll ask for the children's numbers they'll they'll figure out who is the right person to help get that together and get it done because their goal is to get this approved for the veteran well, that's great. So we're here, Liz Wolf uh, with Interim Healthcare. So, Liz, your phone number, what's the best number to reach you at? This one here, 959, no, 951. 951-0949 is our office number here um, in Honolulu. We're right on Kalakaua Avenue. Um, you're welcome to stop by as well. And also my email, I'm always happy to email these forms or um, respond by email, and that is L Wolf, like the animal with an E, L W O L F E at interimhealthcare.com. And I will usually always respond to that very quickly. So, um, you know, I, it'll only take a second. I'm, we're more than happy to help. And even if you don't, you know, like the patients from Samoa, if we can just fax it in for you, we're happy to do that. Well, do you have any? So are there home care companies that can provide a service? Right. So, so there, there has to be, and you know, I mean, Samoa, you would think. I, I'm sure there are, but some of some of the Samoans, I guess, come over to Tripler for quite some yeah. time to get treatment. Yeah. So they work. There's some of it could be done here, but yeah, generally, you know, if there's if it's for a different area, it would be best to go through, you know, that where you're going to get the home care. Yeah, but you have to apply for them. They can't. You can't email them the, that nine question form and then go directly, right? No, because you guys are the ones that provide the care anyway. So what, right. What's the sense? So we're providing the care, and that way. Um, and actually, sometimes because sometimes they're I mean, they're pretty good about um, expediting it. But with us knowing that it would be our patient and we're providing home care, I will also keep track and I'll call them and see what document, you know, what is left to be done that I can help this patient get the care sooner. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I think they have so many patients that Hawaii patients are not at the top yeah. of their list. You know, we're in a different time zone. So that way, our patients that will be receiving home care from interim health care will, you know, get it as soon as possible and get it approved as soon as possible. Yeah. So, well, thanks, Liz Wolf from Interim Healthcare. We're, so if you listen to us as we record it on our website, it's the, um, what do we call this, uh, Liz? The Veterans <laughs> Veterans Home Care Program. Uh, it's actually called the A and Attendance Pension Benefit Plan. So check it out. Uh, if you're listening to it live, give Liz, a, Liz, Liz Wolf a call, 951-0949. She can answer all your questions, and uh, it's statewide, right? Yep, statewide. And, you know, when we'll, we'll be opening those sites in Maui and Big Island, and then we can. But in the meantime, you know, we're always, you know, we're more than willing to help you connect to another agency or whatever if you if this was to go through. Yeah. So, yeah, we want to help as many veterans as we can. And, um 
here in the Hawaiian Islands. And yeah, if you have any questions, please give me a call. I appreciate it, Liz. Thanks so much. Thank Glad you. Glad you finally got connected and finally got this on the air because this is, guys, it's a really good benefit plan and it doesn't hurt, doesn't cost anything to apply. So thank you very much. It's my we'll pleasure. We'll see you again later down the road. Anyway, so don't forget, uh, it's early, but August 20th is our 10th annual Aging in Place workshop at the Alamon Hotel. So look out for that. Uh, our February March issue is out on the racks right now, f- featuring the cover story "Facing Alzheimer's," and actually our April May issue we're working on right now is, is made about the Lanakila Senior Center, uh, right up the street here from Salem Media. So, anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening in. Don't forget to Facebook us, follow us on on our Facebook page, and look out for KITV's Aging Well segment about seven thirty, seven forty five every Saturday morning. So, anyway, thank you so much for everybody. Aloha and live well. Thank mm-hmm. you.